Um, good morning, everybody. So today, I'm going to talk about epigenetics, Asian cancer, and what do they have in common. So research shows that age is a major risk factor for cancer. Sorry. Um, research shows that age is a major risk factor for cancer. Um, but the biological mechanisms that link age and cancer are not well understood. Today I'm going to talk to you about how epigenetics may link age and cancer. So whether we're growing older or whether cancer grows, they undergo the same biology of cell division. The difference between aging and cancer <laughs> is that while cell division is controlled in aging, it becomes out of control in cancer. I'll go through what I mean by cell division. So this is a parent cell. This is basically a single cell that's getting ready to divide. The parent cell undergoes a process called DNA replication, where it generates two copies of its DNA. This is a critical part of the process because it needs to generate enough copies so that each of the daughter cells, each of the new cells, will get enough of the DNA material. The cell then reorganizes the DNA in a way where um, it becomes, it sits on two halves of the cell, ready for division. Then once divided, you have two daughter cells, two new cells that should have exactly the same genetic material as the parent cell. The issue of cell division is that every time a cell divides, you need to not only copy the DNA, but you need to copy all of the epigenetic layers as well. And that's a lot of copying to do. Similar to the game of Jenga, if one of these epigenetic layers goes wrong, it can affect every layer above and below it. So how are these epigenetic marks copied during cell division or during DNA replication? Today I'm specifically going to give you the example of DNA methylation. So just as a reminder, DNA methylation is when you have a cyto ooh, sorry. When you have a cytosine here in black attached to a methyl group here in red, and that often occurs at CPG nucleotides in the DNA code. So this is, what's, this is what happens to DNA when it's being replicated. This is a representation of a cell. The two black lines here represent the starting DNA duplex in the parent cell. Um, when the replication starts, the two strands of this duplex separate out, and an enzyme called polymerase comes along, uses the parent strand to copy and make a new strand. So at the end of replication, you end up with two DNA duplexes in this cell, each duplex comprised of one parent strand and one new strand. The same thing happens with DNA methylation. However, instead of copying the DNA strand itself, an enzyme called DNMT1 copies the methylation marks on top of the DNA, shown by these lollipops. And this happens at the same time as DNA replication. We call this process maintenance methylation because we're maintaining the methylation from the parent strand onto the new strand. So to put this back in context of cell division, here we have the parent cell. That cell undergoes DNA replication and maintenance methylation to copy its methylation marks. And if everything goes correctly, you end up with two daughter cells that have exactly the same methylation marks as the parent cell. But if copying isn't completely accurate, you may end up with daughter cells that are slightly different from the parent cell or completely different from the parent cell. These daughter cells then go on to divide again and again. And like a game of Chinese whispers, these errors in the epigenetic, um, in the epigenetic marks are then copied to subsequent daughter cells. And new errors can arise at every division. So the errors in the copying of the epigenetic marks during DNA replication or during cell division leads to the change in that epigenetic mark over time. And that's something we call epigenetic drift. So what evidence do we have of that happening in real life? Re researchers in the last five years or so have shown that our bodies contain what's called an epigenetic clock um, that's based on DNA methylation. So essentially, we found that certain regions of the genome uh, change the methylation or drift the methylation at a rate that is linear to chronological age. So we could, the, um, yeah, the changes here happen linearly to chronological age compared to other regions in the genome. Here is some of the real data. So down here we have chronological age, which is your calendar age. Along the y-axis we have DNA methylation drift or the change in methylation. 
And you can see that as people get older, we're getting increase in the drift. And every point on this graph is a person. You can see that there's a linear relationship at this point. This is accurate enough where if you took blood DNA and measured the methylation of a person's blood DNA, you can predict that person's age to within four years. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's why researchers have started to call this the biological age. Interestingly, if we look at this section down here before the age of 20, the change in methylation is much faster than the change in age, and that's representative of the fast development we all experience before adulthood. So the rate at which the clock ticks is not set in stone. We can have a rate that is comparable to chronological age between the biological age and chronological age. The biological age can either be accelerated compared to the chronological age or decelerated compared to chronological age. And researchers have shown that having an accelerated epigenetic clock can lead to a range of diseases and phenotypes or um, effects. So some examples are an older epigenetic clock is associated with weaker hand grip strength in females. Huntington's disease has, shows signs of accelerated aging in specific brain regions. Epigenetic age acceleration is associated with an increased risk of all-cause mortality. And in cancer, Acute myeloid leukemia patients have more favorable outcomes if they show a lower epigenetic age. And myelodysplastic syndrome cancer cells themselves, the cancer cells themselves, show an accelerated epigenetic age. So this has led researchers to build this model of epigenetic drift, lifestyle, and disease. So in the gray line in the center, we have what we call normal aging. So that's when the biological age ticks by at the same rate as the chronological age. If we have, we can also get healthy aging, perhaps due to genetics, lifestyle, or environment, where our biological age is ticking by slower than the chronological age, leading to a decelerated clock. You could also have premature aging or unhealthy aging, perhaps caused by smoking or stress, where the biological age is ticking by faster than the chronological age, leading to an accelerated, accelerated clock. So, as I said before, um, acceleration of the epigenetic clock is related to cancer and cancer outcomes. But we also know that a lot of these regions that are clock regions in the genome also change in cancer and are important tumor suppressor genes such as P16 and RUNX3. And the increased methylation at these genes can cause these genes to shut down. And once those genes are shut down, you increase your risk of cancer. So this has led researchers to build a accumulation model of how epigenetic drift as part of aging may predispose to cancer. So say you need this much um, epigenetic drift to, gain, to get a high cancer risk. With normal aging, you accumulate methylation drift as you age and you may reach this point at A90 or perhaps not at all. With an accelerated aging, you may reach this high risk point earlier and therefore be at high risk for a longer period of your life. And that methylation change in itself with additional genetic triggers can then cause cancer initiation. So to summarize, coming back to the title of my talk, epigenetics, age and cancer, what do they have in common? As I've shown, aging and cancer have a process called cell division in common. As part of cell division, there's DNA replication and DNA replication can cause errors in copying of epigenetic marks, which we call epigenetic drift. The epigenetic drift in certain regions of the genome change at a rate that's linear or comparable to, to chronological aging, which we call the epigenetic clock or the biological age. And that that clock can accelerate or decelerate based on a number of factors, but acceleration is often related to disease. Also, these clock regions are found to be important genes of regions that are also altered in cancer. And finally, this has led us to what we think of as an accumulation model, where epigenetic drift as part of aging may predispose to cancer. Thank you for listening.